tell me to please go pray with me. Praise the Lord, all nations, extol him, all peoples, for his kindness overwhelms us, and the Lord's steadfast truth is forever. Hallelujah. Uh, so two quick things. Um, one, um, Glenn just re re reminded me that um, next Sunday is Troy's last Sunday before he goes on sab sabbatical, and I think there's an in, in between the service, like, lemonade get together a send off so we should probably all go to uh, that so we won't have uh, class um, the other thing is I, I, I thought of this as I was getting this ready this this morning um, the end of this prayer at the end of Psalm 17 is the word hallelujah which is a word we say all the time in church um, but I don't think we always know what it means so I thought I'd point that out um, so we have hallelujah which is a Hebrew word. Alleluia is just the Latin version. It's the same word. But if you want to kind know what that word means, it's hallelu is a let us praise. That's what it means. And haya is God's name. That's, literally, that's what that word means. So it's, it's let us praise a God, but it's, a, a, it's that name, the Yahweh, God's personal name right so that's what yeah, well, that's, I, I experienced that a lot so I thought I would just <laughs> explain it right um, so we talked about this a uh, psalm last fall if you were if you were here um, when we were kind of going through the Old Testament we did a couple of weeks on the uh, Psalms um, and we talked about this one then but we didn't spend a whole lot of time on it and it came to mind to me this week. Um, it actually, I was reading a, a devotional, and this was the, the subject of the, the devotional. And again, because we've been doing a psalms in the a church, I thought this would be a, a, for the a sermon series, and we're ending that this, this week. Um, I did notice that um, we didn't have a psalm in the worship services that was a psalm of this is basically a psalm of cursing which we don't but this that's actually why i want to highlight it this is these are the parts of the bible that we don't like right um so i want to give it a little bit of context but then i think we should actually read it let's just go around the room and everybody read a verse right and then we'll talk about, about what it means but the, the the context and why i wanted to highlight it is i mean it this on the surface level, it's basically a prayer to, to God that says, destroy my enemies. Um, and I think we're all paying attention to the, to the world at this point, right? Um, and there's all kinds of polarization and the vision. And I've had my, um, I've found myself occasionally thinking this way <laughs> um, over the last few, few weeks. Right, and so I thought this would be a good thing for us to to do this. And I'm assuming I'm not the 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 only one. So the the context of this is really in a um, a setting of where there's the the a vision and be trail um, and I've given you some of my uh, notes but I do think one of the things worth pointing out right away before we read it is who this person is asking or who the uh, a psalmist we're told it's a psalm of D David who they're asking God to dis destroy it isn't some far away enemy it's clearly actually a person they were once close to and intimate with so there's a sense of be betrayal here um, so let's read it. I am going to just warn you. There's a, you got to sit up front unless we want to get you a different a chair. <laughs> right? <you know? laughs> um, so let's read it. And as I said, um, it is, there are some shocking elements here, right? So I can start and then, do you want to go next? And we'll just go like this, right? Um, so... And by, uh, by the way, if you're following along in your own Bible, the verses <laughs> might be off by one. So the uh, Psalms are one of the weird uh, books where the headings are actually there in the original text, but we don't count them as a verse in our English Bible. So the first half of a verse here, for the lead player, a Psalm of David, most of your English Bibles will have that in italics above, but it is actually there in the Hebrew text. Right? So it isn't a heading. Right? And oftentimes, scholars don't know what some of these things mean, because the Psalms are music, and they actually have things in them that we think are musical notations, 
but we've kind of lost the meaning of it. So we're not always sure what this means, right? So this one tells us it's a Psalm of David written for a lead player. So there's some kind of a major instrument. Anyway, that's, that's what that is. Then it goes on to say, God of my praise, do not be a silent. For the wicked mouth of deceit has opened against me. They spoke to me with lying tongue. And words of hate, hatred swarmed around me. They battled me for no cause. In return for my love, they accuse me, though my prayer is for them. And they offer me evil in return for good, and hatred in return for my love. Appoint a wicked man over him. Let an accuser stand in his right. When he is judged, let him come out guilty, and his prayer be an offense. Let his days be few, may another man take his post. May his children become orphans, and his wife a widow. May his children wander and beg, driven out from the ruins of their homes. May the lender snare all that he has, and may strangers plunder his wealth. May no one extend to him kindness and no pity, it, and no one pity his orphans. May his offspring be cut off in the next generation, his name wiped out. May the wrong of his fathers be recalled by the Lord, and his mother's offense not be wiped out. Let these be ever before the Lord, that he cut off from the earth their name. Because he did not remember to do kindness, he pursued the poor and the needy, the heart star, sore to put them to death. He loved a curse, may it come upon him, he desired, not blessing, may it stay far from him. He donned curses his garb, may it enter his innards like water and like oil in his bones. May it be like a garment he wraps around him, like a belt he girds at all times. This is the plight of my accusers from the Lord, and those who speak against my life. And you, O Lord, Master, act on my behalf for the sake of your name. Your kindness is good, O oh, save me. For poor and needy am I, and my heart is pierced within me. Like a lengthening a shadow I go off. I am shaken away like the locust. My knees falter <clears throat> from fasting, and my flesh is stripped of fat. As for me, I become a reproach to them. They see me, they shake their heads. Help me, O oh Lord, my God, rescue me as befits your kindness. And they may know that your hand it is. It is you, O oh Lord, who did it. Let them curse, and you, you will bless. They will rise and be shamed, and your servant will rejoice. Let my accusers don disguise. And I'm sorry, let my accusers don disgrace. And let them wrap around like a robe their shame. I highly acclaim the Lord with my mouth, and in the midst of the many I praise him. For he stands at the needy's right hand to rescue him from his condemnation. Just pretty happy, isn't it, in this one? <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> right? I mean, it's like the, the first half of this is pretty awful. Right? I mean, it's like every single thing we can wish bad to this person we're going to do. Like, you know, one, we want them to die, right? We want their children to be orphaned, their wife to become a widow. We want them to be dirt poor and have to beg for everything. We want their offspring to be cut off, their name wiped out of existence. We want to bring back the faults of their parents and accuse them of that. I mean, it just gets deeper and deeper and deeper, right? I mean, it's um, let them be cut off, right, from everything, right? Um, and then we get a shift in the middle, right? And there, there is a reason why, right? They didn't, this person that we're attacking, right, did not re, re remember to do kindness. They pursued the poor and needy, the heart sore to put them to, to death. So they're, they're also being cast in this terrible light, right? But I do think it's important that we go back to the beginning and see this is pretty personal, right? Um, they've, like, the person 
praying this or the congregation uh, singing this, right? Because this is, again, I think it's worth pointing out, this is a hymn. At some point, this got uh, sung in worship. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, what do you do with that? Um, right? And, you know, but, but there is this idea of this person has, you know, it's, it is put in the first person, a singular, of this person has lied, they're de deceitful, they've returned our affection with accusation, um, they offer me evil in return for, for good, hatred in return for a love. So there's this sense of be betrayal, right? Of, well, um, well, again, this is kind of what I, again, why I'm kind of highlighting this one of, um, again, I came across this this week reading it's this in a D, D devotional, and it kind of has been with me the last couple of days thinking about this psalm of so many people in our, in our world right now, including us, I'm willing to guess, feel this way, right? Um, and so we should actually give some attention of what are we supposed to, to do with this, right? Um, and again, I, one of the reasons I wanted to highlight it is um, we don't hear our sermons on this often. <laughs> right, and, and we can ask why. I mean, it's, like, this would be hard to preach from the pulpit. Oh, why, why? <laughs> <laughs> right, you know, um, and it's just, it isn't exactly welcoming. I mean, uh, imagine if you came into a church for the first time and this was the sermon text. <laughs> You would, I'm in the wrong spot, right? <laughs> right? <laughs> right? Exactly, right? You know? Um, I mean, so I think there's, there's a, a reason why these sorts of psalms don't make it into the lectionary. They don't get a, a priest on often, right? Um, the, so I'm, I'm re, re relying here pretty heavily on a book, and if, you, if you're interested in the book, it's on the footnote on the back. It's by a woman named Ellen Davis, who's an Episcopal priest and um, or, or was a pro professor of Old Testament at, at La Duke. Right. And she talks about this psalm and says, this seems like a very un Christian, un Christ like uh, psalm. Right? This is the part of the Old Testament we want to dismiss. It's the like, this is the terrible God of the Old Testament, right? We want to get rid of this. Um, right. <laughs> that's right. And right, that's how we tend to, to think about this. And again, I think we should not dismiss these things too quickly. But let's figure out what we what we could, yeah, could do with this. Yeah, could God say to come to him with anything? Right. I mean, so, yeah. And I think this is, if we pay attention here, right, right as we get further in the psalm, right, the... And I'm going to highlight this later too, but nowhere in this a psalm does the person praying it say, these are the steps I'm going to take to get the revenge. It's rather they go to God and say, hey God, you do something about this. <laughs> I mean, that's, I mean that, no, I think, I think that's a, a good way of thinking about it, right? It's somebody hurt you, one of your friends be, be trade you, something happened at work, I mean, we can think of all kinds of circumstances, right? And it is helpful to sort of, I'm going to write it all down. These are the things I want to do to this person, right? Get it out so you don't do Right. And I think there is, an, there is an, an element of this, but I do think it's important to st still recall it's a, also a prayer or a hymn of where we are actually asking God to intervene. You know, we're, we're telling God, you know, this is what I'd like you to do. Um, and I do think there's an element of this where it's freeing just to say those things out aloud, right? It's like going to a therapy or going talking to your friends of this person is awful, this is what they did to me. And getting it out does help, right? Um, but I think we need to hold on to a bit more, right? So one, I mean, I think one thing we're being given is permission to feel that anger. I don't think that's important. Like it, it isn't like I can't have this. It's I'm I'm the bad person if I feel this way. No, it's God saying, "I know you feel this way. Let me give you some words to help express it." Right? Because um, I actually find that, that that's what's helpful here. Of like sometimes I can be angry and I don't have words for it. To and like and now I do. This is how I feel about that other person. <laughs> right? Uh, it does, right? Um, well, and again, I imagine 
for singing this in worship. It would be loud. It would be loud, right? <laughs> you know, it would be loud. Um, yeah. You know, and I actually, we, it would be, I don't know how we would do it, but it would be an interesting experience to like get people together and sing these sorts of, so, what, would it, what would it do? Right? You had your hand up, Katie. I was just thinking, I know there's the separation of church and state, but what if this were at every voting booth? Right. <laughs> <laughs> right? Um, well, and again, this is why I want to highlight this, because, I th um, you know, again, I read this, and then I started thinking about, like, this is the very way I'm hearing people speak all the time, right? And realizing I'm feeling that way, too, right? And it's involved with, on, on all kinds of, of levels. I mean, there's conflict in, in our country, there's conflict in the world, like these far d distant things of these people are the enemy, we feel this way. But it's also in local politics, it's in our families, it's in our communities, right, um, that we feel this way, right? Right. Um, it must be a challenge to answer Ken's question. <laughs> right? Yeah, um, and again, I mean, Kids feel this way too, right? Um, and to g recognize that this is human, um, and not to immediately uh, say we need to push these feelings down. I think Bob, you had your hand up. No, okay, mm -mm. you did. Okay. Um, the other thing I think it's worth highlighting is the Psalms have long been read by the a church as if they're Jesus's prayers. He does prepare them often. So, what if this is one of one of his? I mean, what if this is how he's feeling when you know the Judas be, be betrays him, or when all the disciples run away, or when his family comes and tells him he's crazy? Right? To recognize that maybe he feels that way too. Right? Um, it's not just gentle feeling; it's very strong. Yeah. Um, go ahead, Dale. Um, there, back in Fargo, when we would do the walk at the end of the year, the professor yep. would line up in our regalia and stuff. And I always stood behind uh, the head of nursing. And the head of nursing was a nun. Uh, and there was a convent in town. And we got to talking, you know, how you wait around before you march. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I was telling her that my wife and I read the Psalms daily. And she says, uh, we go through the Psalms every week in the convent. Uh, and uh, But there are some Psalms we've cut out. <laughs> and I, I was thinking probably it has to do with like throwing happy as those who uh, throw your babies. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, this one. Uh, or, or maybe this one. But this one, as I was just saying, Cheryl and I read the Psalms every day. And uh, this Psalm uh, comes up over and over. And it troubles me enough. Uh, but let me just offer, yeah. uh, and I'm, I'm pretty sure that the explanation that you have here, or that others have, doesn't fit this. But I was so troubled by it that I began to be aware that of uh, the word accuse. Accusation, accusation, accusation. Yep. It's repeated several times in the psalm. And there seems to be a break right after verse 5 where we see a colon. You see, mm -hmm. uh, uh, good and hatred in return for my love. Colon. Now, I know that's an interpretation. Yep. But a colon usually says, so here's what I mean. That's what a yep. colon usually means. Yep. And it says, so this is what my enemies are saying about me. There, a point of wicked man to be over him. Uh, uh, when he is judged, let him become guilty. So the psalmist yeah. is always saying, this is what they're saying about me. All the way down through those mays. Uh, so verse 14, may the wrongs of his father be called and so on. Uh, let these always be before the Lord. Um, and so 16 and 17. But at a certain point then, it says, uh, it seems to shift back. And it's right there somewhere around 17 or 18. It says, he donned a curse as his garb. Yeah. That is, my accusers, uh, uh, the things that they've been saying about me after this, may it enter his word. So it's like it now comes back on him. So I've, I've been reading this yeah. 
for a couple of years this way, that the first half is accusations against the psalmist, and then he turns them back on it and asks God to judge them because that's the accusations. But I'm never really happy with that either. It doesn't seem but to be a straightforward... It's better, though. <laughs> Well, and I, I think there's a way, I mean, I'm intrigued by that way, way of reading it. And I think there's something, something to it. Um, I think we can even they'll bring them the two kind of readings to together and say whether that's how it is or not. Um, there is, there is still that move to re reverse it. So even if it's, these are all the things they're saying about Hongkami, there is still this turn of, God, you do that to, to them, right? Um, I think it does help to read it like, this is how bad things have been for me. This is the way I've been accused. Um, but, you know, if we go down to like verse 20, this be the plight of my accusers from the, from the Lord, which is an interesting turn too, right? Where are those accusers coming from? And those who speak against my life, right? Um, no matter what we, however we read it, the, the person writing this and praying this and singing this is pretty hello and have been brought low by people they thought were their friends, right? Um, and I, the thing I want to emphasize is that when God is asking us to bring these sorts of feelings, no matter how deep and awful they are, to to Him, right? To sort of say, this is how where I'm at, right? Um, and to to recognize that this kind of be betrayal happens, and we do feel this way, right? So again, I think if you're following along, I'm just kind of um, just summarizing my own notes, right? I do think there's something here of God is giving us words to express hurt and pain, especially from be betrayal. Um, again, I don't think we're supposed to act on this. It isn't sort of giving us this the justification for it, where I'm going to go get a revenge. Um, but again, it's admitting this is how we feel and asking God to do something about it, right? Um, I ha I've actually done this more than once, and if you ever feel this way, I would encourage you to do it. Go find a place where no one but God can hear you and scream this. <laughs> You'll feel better. <laughs> <laughs> right? I'm like, this is where I'm at. I mean, I don't know if you have, this is kind of an old television show or older television show now, but the, the West Wing right, show, there's a scene in which, I forget the, guy, the president's name um, in the show, but the guy who's the uh, president, like, some terrible thing has happened, and he's in a cathedral, and he kicks everybody, everybody out. And for about two, two or four minutes in the show, he just curses God. And it's this powerful scene of this is why are you so so awful and allowing these things to happen, right? I think God again can handle that, right? Um, I, the other big thing here is I think we've actually learned that anger is a possible path to God, right? I mean, if you're really angry at, at someone, that indicates that you have a relationship with them, right? The opposite of love is an anger and hatred; it's apathy. Right, so if you are really angry, that means you still care to some a degree, right? Um, and we, what are the... This is, that's in, in a certain sense, this is a faithful prayer of bringing all these things to, to God. And look at the expectations it's putting on God. It's expecting that God is a God of justice and of mercy, and it's going to do something about this, right? Um, it assumes that God is on our side. We, we might want to question that, that a bit, but it is assuming that if we really have a suffered injustice and been be, be a trade, right, that God cares about the, that, right? And that God also thinks those things are awful, right? Um, so one place I think we should emphasize, if we think about this just in our community, whether it's this a church and the way that we go out into our, our local community, it is giving us a task as a church to call this sort of behavior out. Well, if there is injustice happening, so the, I have it in quotes because it comes from this book I've been reading, but 
It emphasizes that we have the prophetic task of naming and re-announcing evil. This is actually what this highlights for us is bad things are happening. I'm angry about it, this in justice. What do we do about it? Well, the first thing we do about it is bring it to God, right? Um, we're, we're reading the book right now. The question is, is whether we do it with violence or yes, we do it right. with And, you know, as Presbyterians, we're called to, you know, address this. Right. But, you know, um, but I think, again, like, to think about that question, like, there is some grave injustice, which is what we're seeing in our, in our you know, the a student protest and all these things, right? They're trying to, whether we agree with them or not, they see an in, in good justice and are standing up to it, right? And how do you deal with it? Do you deal with violence or do you deal with pacifism? We're seeing both, right? Um, well, before we can even make that a choice of is violence or pacifism the answer, we need someone to direct us and give us some guidance, which is what the a psalmist is having us do. God, I'm really angry. This awful thing is happening. What would you have us do? Right? And the first thing the psalmist tells us to do is to give it to, to God. Now, God might come, come back and tell us pacifism or violence. I mean, we, don't, we, don't, we don't know, right? Um, personally, I think God is inclined towards pacifism, but that might not be the answer every a single time, right? Um, and one of the things I want to highlight here is that I think part of what this ought to do then is ought to, it ought to help us think about what the, a church is for. I think too often we think of the church as this place where we get to go a run from all those problems in the world. We come here, it's a nice, a safe space. We don't have to think about these things or talk about them. Maybe we say a nice prayer about them, right? In reality, this is ground a zero where we figure out what to do. And we take these issues on, right? Probably issues that exist here. Right? They don't just exist outside. They're here in the a church, right? That was, the whole, that was a major question in the 60s with Martin Luther King. Right. Absolutely, right. It's just a thing in the world that's been. Yeah. Right, and I, th I mean, we're in that same spot, right? I mean, though, um, someone sent me an audio clip this week of a Malcolm X talking about Palestine, mm -hmm. and it could have been written uh, yesterday. Yeah. I was just uh, stunned. Like, it was like, you are speaking to what's happening right and, and now, right? What I don't want to do is what occurred in the 60s, 70s, and we had Right. So, beautiful things, sir. Yep. Absolutely. Um, so I'm going to read a couple other things here, then I want us to actually discuss it. Um, so I'm going to read this big long quote from this book I've been reading by Ellen Davis. So she says about these psalms, um, in these psalms, no personal vendetta is authorized, no pouring sugar in the gas tank, no picking up a gun or hiring one. On the contrary, the validity of any punishing action that may occur depends entirely on its being God's action and not ours. And readers of the Bible could recognize that this is in fact a severely limiting condition. For God's action is free, directed not only to our healing, but to the healing of the whole immoral order. But through these songs, we demand that our enemies be driven into God's hands, but who will say what will happen to them there? For God is manifest in a judgment of our enemies, but also, alas, in a mercy towards them. Thus, these vengeful psalms have a relationship with other forms of prayer for our enemies. So, this is another thing to think about. Jesus tells us to pray for our enemies. Right? Sometimes maybe he's telling us to pray this a psalm. It isn't always sort of butterflies and happiness when we pray for our enemies, right? Um, but then there's this, she goes on to point out this sort of big biblical theme. I think the best way to um, explain that theme is the, the, the Jonah, right? Why does Jonah run? 
God tells him to go to Hanenavan. He gets in a boat and goes the, the, the other way. Why? Because he's not a face He's afraid they'll, they'll take him up by God's word. Right. He doesn't want them to re repent. He wants these people de destroyed. And I think, you know, the Jonah story with the Assyrians, I mean, these are people who came down into Israel and killed all kinds of people, right? We actually have archaeological evidence of artwork from the Assyrians. That in their bedrooms they had panels of them cutting off people's heads and raping them and all these sorts of and that's how violent they were, right? So, so Jonah. Yeah. I mean, this was the culture. And Jonah's like, God might forgive them. I want them to, to die. So I'm going the other way. Right? Um, that is what could happen when we pray this kind of a psalm. Well, but we wish. <laughs> right, right. Um, but I, but I, no, that's the issue of like, do we really? Because sometimes we don't. Sometimes we don't want them uh, forgiven. We don't want them to experience God's mercy. I keep thinking of. Uh, uh, in Romans 12, where it says, um, well, don't take vengeance. Yep. Vengeance is mine. mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. Which it seems like to me is saying, from my perspective, if I was judge, this is what I would do, but I'm probably not wise enough to make these decisions about yep. someone else. So I'm going to give it to you, Lord. This is, this is my complaint against them. And I'm angry. Yep. But I'm going to release it. Vengeance is yours. And then when Jesus says, pray this way, uh, forgive us our debts, or I, like yep. the, uh, the, the uh, forgive us our trespasses, trespasses, as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. It sets us free somehow to turn it over to the yep. Lord. And if we hold on to it ourselves, we just turn ourselves into darkness. Mm -hmm. But if we can let loose of it and say, God is a just God. Vengeance yep. is His. I think He ought to take it, but it's up to you. So I, I, I think that's kind of hitting the nail on the head of this is what we're su 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 supposed to be doing. I'm saying, God, I really wish you'd go wipe this person out, but that's not my uh, job, so I'm going to give it to you. Here's my advice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? Um, and then we. But he's not likely to do it, right? And, but and then, but you know, but also probably with the expectation, God's going to be a bit more lenient than we are, right? Um, but again, I think this also gives us the so it does free us from holding on to that burden of anger and, and guilt and hate, right? All these sorts of things we have. Um, but I also think it again frees us to say these feelings are valid. That we can have them, we can give them to God, but we still feel them and have them. And, and so there is a prayer of also saying, we want to be freed from this, right? Um, but think about the Lord's Prayer. I think that's a helpful thing to bring up. So whether it's debts or trespasses, um, when we pray it every, every Sunday in worship, that's the prayer that we pray with our kids every, every night, right? Um, there are times when I won't pray that line. Because I'm not ready to sort of forgive the uh, trespasses of that other person, <laughs> you know. And, and I think that that's again that's the person. Yes, right. He he says it. I just get quiet. You know, that's how it works. <laughs> um, but I mean, I think again, that's it's worth pointing out. This is who we are, right? And so we shouldn't go to this false a place of. I'm going to for, for, forgive them, realizing that we do still hold on to this. But we are part of what we're doing is asking God to help us let go of that anger, right? Yeah. Actually, we command them to do that. <laughs> yeah. We say, forgive us yeah. our debts. Yeah. Our um, so, uh, where do I get off uh, commanding God to do anything? Right, but I it, think it's a request. It's not a demand. 
They're all imperatives. Yeah, they're imperatives. So um, there's, a, there's an early church, a theologian named Gregory of Anissa, who wrote a commentary on the Lord's Lord's Prayer. And he actually interprets this as, he points out, it is a command. We're telling God, forgive us as we forgive those who trespass against us. Oh, <laughs> right? So it's, and he actually says, he, he turns it, he turns it on, on, its, on its head and says, hey God, look, we're trying to forgive those who have hurt us. We ask you to do the same for us. Right? But it is also this, but it's also tied up with how good of a job are we doing? Right? And kind of, we're, we're, we're putting ourselves on the, uh, a spot to say, can we really for, for, forgive these other people? And there, so I think it's, it's a command, but it's also a, a request of help us to be people who really can forgive. Right? Can, can I ask God to forgive me as I forgive others? Right. And then I say, well, how well am I forgiving, forgiving others? Yeah. Do I want God to forgive me that way? Yeah. No, I want Him to be more merciful. Right. Right. Than I am yeah. To um, <laughs> and I think that's what that prayer does. It gets us to think of. How well are we, for, you know, <laughs> forgiving others, right? Um, and I think God is commerciful. We need time to forgive where God always doesn't, right? Um, so at the at the end of this, and this is where we can have we can de, de, uh, discuss this is the final paragraph on my back page. If you're following along. I'm going to quote Davis again, and she says, "The ancient rabbis." a set of scripture. Turn it, turn it and turn it, for everything is in it. If you have courage and it will take some, try turning this psalm, the, the, try turning this a psalm, I've got an extra the in there, 180 degrees, until it is directed at your self and ask, is there anyone in the community of God's people who would want to say this to God about me, or maybe about us? And she goes on to talk about climate uh, change and say look at all the things that we're doing that's hurting people either in the uh, future or people who live in areas where they're more directly affected right and she has a, a couple pages of talking about how we should think ab about this and actually say are we doing this right um, but I thought we could also ask what other areas are there right I mean in terms of right politics global conflicts, local conflicts, conflicts right here in our con congregation of, are there people who would pray this about you and me? Right? And that's, I think, one other way to think about what this psalm might do. It isn't only our prayer of, this person wronged me, God, this is what I want you to, to do. It's also about thinking, what have I done to someone else? Well, and the idea that you mentioned in the beginning is that this is not a stranger, but a right. friend yeah, yeah. or perhaps family. Right. You know, if you think of your church as a family, you know, yep. there might be people in there that you feel this way about, and they might feel that way about yep. you, too. So, yeah, it's, it is very good to look at this one for us. Yeah. I've had a couple of experiences where people are going through the 12-step process. I may have mentioned this before here. And they get to that step where they say you got to reconcile with somebody here on the hospital. Yes. And I get calls out of the blue. I've gotten to this way. And said, I just want to let you know I forgive you. And I say, oh? <laughs> <laughs> Or for what? I didn't know you were mad at me. Right. <laughs> I didn't know that I had wronged you. Yeah. And uh, uh, in at least one case, they weren't willing to tell me what I had done. Uh, but it became clear to me that there were at least two people in my life that, uh, that felt like I had armed them, and I didn't know it. Uh, and then we have a daughter who is estranged from us. And uh, this one is no mystery. We know that she is very angry at us. Uh, so uh, trying to imagine people out there who are praying this psalm back at me, as it were, uh, it has come home to me in our daughter, but also in the 12-step yeah. program coming back at me. 
Mm-hmm. But there are other mm-hmm. psalms that can be prayed for them, for ourselves. Yeah. Feelings as life can change. Mm-hmm. And no matter what someone else does, I do, I can move on, I can change, I can um, respect that person uh, for who they are, and their high intelligence, and all that they do. Unknown and unknown. Right. Uh, Marge? What's interesting... uh, Sorry. I I don't Uh, know whether... uh, Did you get it or me? It's Marge first. Marge's been trying to get in a couple times. (laughs) With forgiveness, a lot of times you're told, I forgive, or you can say, I forgive, but I'm not forgetting. Mm -hmm. And when we turn something over to God, does that mean we have to forget, or is it okay to still remember that, you know, with to let go of the angst or whatever, but still know that it happened? Yeah, how do I, the way I think I would go about answering that is, um, I mean, we talk about God forgiving us, right? Mm-hmm. Well, I don't think God forgets anything. Right, right. <laughs> if he knows everything, so but but there's a way of uh, the other people yeah. that we turn it right. turn over to him, and he's dealing with. Us. Um, so it, when God forgives us, He doesn't forget the things that we've done. He doesn't hold them against us, right? So I think that would be the the model for us too. Of I'm not going to forget what the. I mean. It, it, if it's really bad, if it's like what we're reading about in this psalm, well, this person has spent this deep be, be a trail. I don't think you could for, forget without like hypnosis or like a lum, lumpotomy, right? Um, so what do you do with it? You say, this person did do this thing, I'm hurt, I'm angry, but to the best that we can, we don't base the ongoing relationship with that person on these things, right? Um, and some of that would be like, maybe I can't be your friend, but I'm also not going to be actively putting sugar in your gas tank, <laughs> right? Um, Doug, um, our, our dear friend Larry Brock, who passed this yep. year, uh, used to tell me that he would call people up that he felt like he had wronged in his past, mm-hmm. and they would often go. What? Yeah. <laughs> but it troubled him because he had that memory, and it yeah. was it was like he felt like he needed to rectify that. Yeah. So you know, I, I it kind of goes both ways when you think about it. Bob, I think we don't forget just so it doesn't happen, <laughs> right? Either by that person or somebody else that you know, we forgive them, but we you know, don't forget what happened just simply for the practical reason that you don't allow it to happen again. Yeah. And again, again what does forgiveness m- mean? Right? I mean, forgiveness doesn't mean there's no consequences. Right? I mean, so let's, let's get extreme. Right? If someone murders a loved one, right? you can forgive them and still think, but you should still go to a jail for a period of time. Um, and you probably, you know, you're not a safe person, so we should all be, be, be careful around you, right? Forgiveness doesn't mean there are no consequences. Forgiveness right. is for the forgiver, not the forgiver. Right. Um, and again, like part of this is like, how are we safe, right? I mean, it, you know, it doesn't have to be violence. It can be, this is, you know, if we're so angry at this person, it could be the best thing we do is have a period of time away from them, right? Um, but I th- again, I think part of what this psalm does is it gets us to think about what have we done to people, what have people done to us, encourages us to give this to, to God the best that we can, right? That it's not a burden that we have to carry on our on our own, right? And it, that's freedom. Sort of say, like feeling these these sorts of things is not evil in and of itself. Acting on them might be. Well, and uh, it brings to mind uh, in some families that I know, uh, there was this big breakup in the 
family, yep. you know, over some trivial thing. Yep. And as they got older and their memories failed, they forgot what it was yep. all yep. about and they reconciled. So getting old is a good thing. <laughs> 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 Anyone else have any comments? We can actually, if you're going to the, the second service, we can get there on, on, on time for once. So, uh, so again, a re, re, reminder, we won't meet next week because um, of the going.